Over the years, Rainbow Six Siege has seen many guns push the limits of the game's balance. Jaeger's 416 ACOG, Maestro's All the Hipfire, Alibi's MX4, and the SMG-11 ACOG all come to mind. All of these guns had one aspect of them that was just way too strong. However, the gun I'll be talking about today was overpowered in every stretch of the word. It completely broke the game's meta and managed to stay overpowered for multiple seasons. What gun am I talking about? Well, let's go ahead and get into the video. For the start of today's story, we must go back to August of 2017 with the release of Operation Blood Orchid. And this season was absolutely stacked. Due to the lack of content in Operation Health, Ubisoft decided to release three new operators, one new map, and seven new weapons on these operators to make up for it. Most of these operators were released in an incredibly strong state with strong gadgets and overpowered guns. These are released with the ability to see all his goose through walls, they would deal damage to you when stepped on and over time, and he had access to an extremely strong SMG in the form of the T5 with low recoil and high damage. He really had no downsides and he quickly became one of the most picked operators in Siege. However, despite him having a strong weapon at his disposal, he isn't the one we are talking about today. Now, you may think I may be talking about Ying, but Ying's gun really wasn't great. The main thing that made Ying so strong was the meta she released in. During Operation Blood Orchid, Glaz was extremely strong. He was honestly one of the best operators in the game, and Ying happened to synergize perfectly with him. But as I said, Ying being strong had nothing to do with her gun. However, the last operator that was released in this season had by far the most busted gun to ever touch Siege. That being Ella. Ella is widely considered to be the strongest defender to ever touch this game. And by some, she was the strongest operator ever released. Her gadget definitely has a small role to play in this. If you didn't know, Ella's Grismont Mines used to disable your ability to sprint, make your walking speed significantly slower, your camera speed slower, she had access to four of her Grismots, and she could set off a fifth one when she was down. So at the time, she had one of the best traps in the game. But her gadget wasn't nearly as strong or as talked about as her primary SMG. That being the Scorpion Eva. At the time, the Scorpion had a 50 round drum mag, low recoil, and the highest fire rate out of any primary in the game. These problematic stats and her three speed rating allowed her to be a gunfight machine. Finding yourself on the other end of this gun was a damn near death sentence. There really wasn't much you could do against it, honestly. Another aspect that many people forget when talking about this though, is that Siege at the time was a completely different game than it is today. In Blood Orchid, mechanics such as quick leaning, crouch spamming, lean spamming, and drop shotting were still at their peak. Ella's gun complemented this playstyle perfectly, and these mechanics in combination with her gun being so oppressive is what directly led to her pick rate being absorbently high. She instantly became the most picked operator on defense by a landslide. She was getting picked over operators like Old Jaeger, which goes to show how strong she truly was. Ella was out there breaking records, and she quickly became a fan favorite operator for obvious reasons. Montages and clips instantly began spreading online of players dominating with her weapon. It seemed like at the time, if you were a content creator, you were playing Ella. Bolo is a great example of this. I first heard of him during Blood Orchid because of the insane clips floating around of him dominating with Ella. Her stupidly overpowered gun combined with his skills made for clips that were downright disgusting to watch. Obviously, with Ella being this strong, she instantly became a predominant pick in Pro League. This meant that her sheer imbalance was being advertised for everyone to see on the big stage. And it honestly gave the game a very bad look. As time went on, players, content creators, and even the developers themselves were wanting Ella to get a nerf. Even though she was one of the most fun operators to play, going against her was the exact opposite. Everyone knew that this was going to be a problem and that something needed to be done. And so, her nerf streak began. This nerf streak started in the mid-season patch of Blood Orchid by removing one of her Grismont mines and making her recoil more difficult to control. While this may seem like a big change on paper, this barely affected Ella. Her gun was still a contentious topic amongst the community. Players really didn't care about her gadget anyway, and her gun was barely phased by the recoil nerf. So Ella continued to be problematic and picked pretty much every round. However, this is when our next operation, White Noise, comes in. White Noise was a controversial season to say the least. It brought us Vigil, Dokubi, and Zofia who instantly became beloved by the community. Specifically, Vigil and Zofia would see a lot of play in the coming season. However, the new map Tower would become one of the most hated maps ever created. And having no map banning system at the time made this hatred even more pronounced. 
However, what we're here for today is the massive LN nerfs that were introduced in this patch. This included 10 bullets being removed from the Scorpion's magazine, leaving it with only 40 rounds. This wasn't that big of a deal for her. She still had a magazine size way bigger than the average defender or even most attackers. But the nerf to her gadget is what everyone was talking about. In response to Ella's ridiculously strong traps, they decided to nerf all concussion effects across the board. Ubisoft made concussion effects no longer stop you from sprinting, and they decided to reduce the amount of time the effects last from seven seconds to four seconds. This made Ella's gadget so much nicer to go against. Before this change, walking into our minds would be a guaranteed death. So this change was unanimously welcomed in the community. However, despite all the nerfs, her gun was still carrying her to the top. Honestly, even if Ubisoft removed Ella's gadget entirely, people would still have played her back then. I don't think Ubisoft realized that people weren't picking Ella for her gadget. They were picking her for her good gun and three speed reigning, nothing more. I must admit, it's impressive that even with all the nerfs she had received at this point, her gun was still allowing her to remain at the top. It just goes to show how overpowered the Scorpion was. Ubisoft really needed to shift their focus from Ella's gadget to her gun. However, it would take them a bit to realize this. So throughout the entirety of Operation White Noise, she continued to ravage the community. However, things would change with the release of Operation Chimera. As I've said multiple times in previous videos, Operation Chimera was an extremely good operation. We saw the best event in R6 history added into the game, that being Outbreak, which was so good that they even made a spin-off game entirely around it. Now, it didn't do very well for a multitude of terrible decisions made by Ubisoft, but it's still worth mentioning. On top of this great event, we also got two new operators in the form of Finca and Lion, who went perfectly with this new event. The sheer amount of content in this operation was quite impressive, but that isn't what we're here for today. Unfortunately for many Ella mains out there, Ubisoft made a change to Ella that would pretty much kill her momentum. Ubisoft reduced her damage by five and made her recoil significantly more difficult to control. This in combination with her previous nerfs resulted in her going on a steep decline. Her pick rate quickly dropped from being one of the most picked operators in the game's history to becoming average at best. And over time, her pick rate would continue to stagnate. She just stopped getting a lot of the love from the community that she once did. However, her win rate was still pretty high. So she kind of became an underrated pick, at least statistically. Things would stay this way until Operation Void Edge, where Ubisoft would finally put the nail in the coffin. Operation Void Edge brought a lot to the table. We saw the introduction of Iana and Oryx, who would both go on to be very meta today. And we saw the fan favorite Oregon rework added into the rank pool. On top of this great new content, we also saw a lot of great balancing changes. The biggest one being the nerfs to Ella. The nerfs that were brought to her in this operation would finally kill her reign of being at the top of the win rate charts for so long. She received four major balancing changes in this patch, all targeted at making her recoil difficult to control. This included making the reduced recoil at the start of a burst last for less time, increasing her vertical recoil, increasing resettle time after a burst, and faster uptime to increase vertical recoil. After these changes were added to the live build, her gun instantly became the hardest gun to control in the game. It was up there with guns like the SMG-11 or even the modern F2. It also didn't help that most of the Scorpion's recoil was horizontal, making it literally impossible to control no matter how good you were. She immediately saw a huge drop in her win rate, meaning that the operator that was once the most picked operator on defense was now a niche operator at best. Now you may be thinking that that's where this story ends. Well, a recent update that just came out buffed Ella's gun massively and she is actually a pretty good operator now. That update just so happens to be Year 8 Season 1, also known as Operation Commanding Force. Commanding Force is a very recent operation, but it didn't bring us very much content. Commanding Force only really brought us a new operator in the form of Brava, which we're all familiar with, and outside of that, we only really got balancing changes, the most important of which was the change to barrels. In this update, the muzzle brake and compensator got huge buffs, making them actually viable for running on a lot of guns. Now I'm sure you're wondering, how does this have anything to do with the Scorpion? Well, this is because Ella's gun benefited massively from the buff to the compensator. As I said before, most of the Scorpion's recoil is horizontal, and now that the Compensator is much better at controlling such recoil, her gun has became a much more viable option. On top of this, the recent removal of Smoke Shield makes Ella look like an even more viable option since she is one of only a couple of operators with one left. Honestly, despite popular belief, I think Ella has gotten a lot better recently. Her gun and loadout is still a shadow of its former self, but at least she is viable nowadays. Will she see the kind of love that she deserves? I don't know, we'll just have to see. But as of right now, I think she's definitely an extremely slept on operator. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's story of the gun that broke 
Rainbow Six Siege. If you did enjoy today's video, I make Siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't wanna miss the next upload. If you wanna see more of me, go follow me on Twitch because I'll be going live roughly two hours after this video goes up. And hopefully, I'll see you there. If you wanna watch another video just like this one, a video pop up on your screen right now where I talk about the season that changed Siege forever. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace. Thank you.